All right, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, and uh, we did a little intro the other day with the Healy Shroud, with the uh, English wheel that Eric and I bought, uh, built, bought. No. <laughs> bought. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts, and uh, Eric's with me today, and uh, Mike. Mike. <laughs> Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts, and Eric's with me today. He's helping out, and Mark is doing the great video work that he normally does, and we even have an uh, observer here. Ed's watching because we can't let him work while we're videoing because he makes a lot of noise. So we gave a little introduction of the uh, mobile English wheel that uh, Eric and I built over the weekend last weekend, and... We didn't really show it too much when we were working on the Healy Shroud. And we also didn't show the air planishing hand, which I had made a while back. We're using the same material. This is the same basic scrap metal that uh, a friend of mine who scrounges around for metal found. And I have a whole bunch of this stuff. And it just so happened to be the right diameter and the right thickness. And it's got plenty of strength to it. It had these beautiful 90 degree bends. And we just took advantage of them by cutting it up and welding it. And I had this, uh, this is a CP original head here. And you could improve this by putting a hinge on it like we did over here. And you could have a hinge with a pin so that you could easily open it and then close it and put the pin. It makes the die change a little bit easier. But this, uh, you can do it, but it, it's a little... Uh, less user friendly by doing it this way if we had the hinge it would be a little better so i just wanted to run both of these machines on some sample pieces of metal you can see what they do and we've got some thin aluminum here this is forty thousandths aluminum and then we have some twenty seven thousandths copper and some forty thousand or nineteen gauge steel pieces and what i'll do is i'll, I'll run the air hammer on each one of these pieces of metal and run the uh, mobile English wheel on each uh, one of these pieces of metal and you'll be able to see exactly what kind of results you can expect from them. So this is an air hammer which is an intermittent tool. So you've got intermittent contact. That is a constant contact. Once the wheels come together they're always in contact with one another. And I have a die here that has a little bit of crown to it. If I put a flat die in here it wouldn't do too much. So this probably has a little bit more crown than I have on the anvil on the on the uh, the English wheel, so this might actually work a little faster. But and then this has a air control, so we got this valve here that shuts the air supply off. This gives you the squeeze amount that you want, and it also has a throttle capability. And this is a Chicago pneumatic. Uh, I think they probably were the late 40s that these came out. And they probably made them into the 60s. So. Really loud, so I have to wear muffs with it. So with the speed control. You've got a lot of different uh, ranges of, of hit that you can get with that speed control. You've got ranges of pressure that you can put on with that uh, thumb screw there. So what we're going to do is just run this a little bit right here. And you'll see, I better put my muffs on. These things are super loud. You get three of these running in the shop, you go insane in about 15 minutes. All right, that was with just a, a moderate air pressure, and you can see that raises up the, the 40 thousandths aluminum really fast. It's a little faceted. Uh, if you use a lower crown die, you wouldn't have as much faceting, but let's see what the blow looks like on this. We'll just hit one spot. There's 
a little bit expanded blow, but it's usually about uh, less than a quarter of an inch in diameter, uh, probably three sixteenths or so. So let's go over here and I'll really wail on it over here. Let's give it full pressure. So you can see that really pops it fast. And that's one of the advantages of a planishing hammer is it does isolated shaping in that one little spot. Whereas the English wheel is more for, uh, works better for larger uh, areas. The one uh, exception would be uh, the English wheels that have an axle on them. Uh, you can actually control that axle and you can limit how much you want to go back and forth with the axle and that will isolate the English wheel to a little tiny spot and you don't have to even push the metal through. It, the, the wheels will draw the metal through. So now let's lower this down to as low as we can get it. We'll bring this back. Let's see if we can get this really low. Right, so there's the lowest hit I can get. And we've got about 150 pounds of air pressure in the shop here. Now that's all on aluminum and we put a straight edge across so you'll be able to see how much that rose up in just a matter of less than a minute or so is this one and then this one with lower air pressure so that's with 40 thousandths this is 3003 aluminum it's relatively soft uh, this one the general rule of thumb on aluminum is whether you can bend it with your thumb you can bend that with one thumb so um, that's pretty soft stuff and it moves really quick. Now let's try the English wheel over here and we'll complete, compare the surface quality too. Every one of these tools has their pros and cons. Alright so both of these have a little bit of heft to them. You have to support them and in this case here the, the, the panel's not supported so I'm not gaining any support from either the planishing hammer or the English wheel. So let's just do a little bit of tightening over here. We got a relatively flat it's a flat top wheel, and we got a, uh, a little bit of crown on the bottom wheel. Now you can see this is really subtle. Now you can see the blow on this wheel here, the tracking pattern, is about 3 sixteenths of an inch or so. Now that's with very light pressure. That's doing a really nice subtle, subtle job. And there's no noise either. All right, let's put the, the you know, see that little crown we got? No noise, much better surface quality. See the surface quality here? See the surface quality here? To me, I am an English wheel fan versus a planishing hammer fan. That said, the planishing hammer does have its, its uses, especially in knocking down wells. It does really well. Some people do all their work with a planishing hammer. They make any kind of panel with a planishing hammer. Now, okay, that was really subtle. Let's move it over to here, and we'll give it a little bit more pressure. Now, we're going to make another one of these 18-inch might be a little while before we get it done and uh, we're going to make our own turnbuckle. I bought some uh, aluminum hex stock so it would be lightweight and it, it's a much better uh, grab on that aluminum hex stock. It's like two inch aluminum head stock. This here I'm limited to how much I can turn this here. If I put a wrench on this this probably would be a little bit better but I I don't have the ability. You can really load these frames up. 
So I don't know if I can get enough pressure on. Let me try two hands. Yeah. Now, normally, if the panel is on the car or something, it's being supported by the panel, but this panel is flying all over the place. So there's a little bit longer with a little bit more pressure. And you remember, what the frame is, is actually a spring. You're loading a spring tension into that frame. So the first one, we got a little bit of rock on that one. This one, now we got a considerable amount of rock. It was only a minute or two. So again, compare the, the surface quality. This surface quality is, is almost flawless. This is, is good, but it's faceted. Now, if you tune your die a little bit more, these are actually CP dies, original CP dies that were in that air hammer, and that's the way they, they made them, uh, probably back in the 50s or so. They came with the, the kit that you would buy when you bought the hammer. So, again, uh, this will raise it probably a little faster, a little further. This will raise it slower, but more measured, more controllable. Uh, better finish. So that's the pros and cons right there. Now this is on aluminum which moves a lot, moves quickly. Let's try a piece of that uh, 19 gauge steel. Alright, so steel is going to take a little bit more to move it. I'm, ha I'm really having a trouble tightening this up so we, we figured, oh let's put this uh, crescent wrench on here and can tighten this a little bit better. But what needs to happen is we're going to put two holes here and we'll be able to put a, uh, a spanner wrench in there. This is kind of clumsy, but it works. So let me tighten this up. And we'll see if this steel will move. So it's leaving the uh, tracking marks. I can see it actually coming up. But you need a little bit more pressure to move the steel. And this frame has plenty of uh, potential pressure. The funny thing is I'm so used to using an English wheel, I'm not in used to using this mobile one. So you have to learn to drive a little bit different now. It, uh, usually you're forcing the metal through the wheels. Here you're forcing the wheels through the metal. So you can see that came up really nicely. And then we'll loosen that. Well, actually we can bring it off and you can hear it. You can hear that snap of the frame there. So what do we got there? Let's take the, and just that little bit, we've got uh, a good quarter of an inch or so of rise in there, and it's super smooth. Very, very nice. Now, without the spanner, uh, I think that it'd be uh, ill-advised to try a heavier pressure here. But now let's put the air on and we'll see what the air can do. And I think you're going to find that the air will work that metal uh, higher and faster and quicker. The die is actually a little bit higher crown too than the anvil I have. So that gives the air hammer a little advantage. So we'll give it a little bit more pressure, uh, more air. made little difference whether it was aluminum or steel to the air hammer and we got about the same amount of rise or so out of that. Again the finish, this is a little faceted, this finish is perfect. So that's the difference between uh, air hammer, mobile air hammer, and a mobile English wheel. 
Now you can accessorize these things like crazy. It depends on how many dies you want to put on them. And you can put, make special dies for them. You probably can put uh, a bead roller set of dies on these too and, and actually roll beads with it. So we'll put that down. And then we have a few real world examples of taking dents out. Now, this fender here was a fender uh, a couple students of mine made at the class for the Studebaker. The wire form was made by uh, another student, and then two students made the aluminum fender, and I, uh, I can't remember what it was made at. Let me check whether it's 060 or 050. It's 060. So this is the stiff 060 aluminum. And it was sitting in the back of the shop there and somebody ran into it and made a dent in it. Now that can be put in the English wheel and roll that out no problem. But let's try throwing this wheel on it. And we'll take that dent out. Turn the dies 45. Yeah, I'd be better off going this way. I would have to turn the dies in order to do it. I'm getting wheel bite on the top wheel. It's biting a little bit. There we go. I really needed to go this way with it in order to get that right. Right here there's a little hump. If I go sideways that would help quite a bit. Working really good. So that was really low pressure, and um, uh, because that dent was so big, uh, the top wheel bit in a little bit, so it had to be sanded. It left a little bit of scarring there. That'll sand out easily. So you can see that advantage of being able to turn the wheels at any angle, and that smoothed out really nice. Probably could stand a little bit up here, but that's nice and smooth again. So, that's aluminum. That was 060. Now let's try a little dent on a steel panel. All right, you, you got to uh, focus in on me. It's not Ferrari money. It's only Mercedes money. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, now we're going to use the mobile English wheel on this, uh, I think it's a mid-80s uh, Mercedes, new old stock. You see it's got the Mercedes sticker on here. The rear quarter panel, I think it's a four-door sedan. I don't know which one it is. Uh, this is one of the panels I got when I bought that uh, body shop out, and if you've been following it on the on my video so we'll open this up we get a little bit of 
a flange here. We're going to go over the flange. If Mark can come over, there's a couple little dents. These are just handling dents that's been hanging around for a while. And it got bumped here. There's a little bump here and a little bump here and a little bump here. So what it needs is just some subtle dent removal here. So we're going to loosen this up, get it over the flange. We've got that low crown wheel in there. Tighten it up a little bit. Now it's engaging. There was another panel that we wanted to do, but it was loaded up with uh, undercoating on the back side, so we didn't have the time to to get that e example. Now, is it okay to do this with the uh, paint on it? Yeah, the paint's not going to hurt anything. It's picking up a little bit on the wheel here, so I don't know. It's some looks like some gum or something. It's, oh, there's some sticky stuff right there. Oh, it's over here. Well, that came out pretty good. The little um, spot that's hit from the other side, maybe we'll turn it over to get that one. Give it a little more pressure right in there. Oh, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And we got this little dent here. Oh, even that little pinprick from the back side looks like a a pick hammer almost. It's probably just something that bumped into it though. Yeah, this is real effortless. I mean, the weight doesn't really come into play because I'm just rolling it like this. So I can see this has a lot of value. Now, if I was using the planishing hammer, you can't count how many times I've used the planishing hammer and said, oh my God, I wish I used the slapper because I made uh, a, a damage to the panel in trying to take out the little minor stuff. This is really good for the subtle stuff. I think I can get that little pinprick out too. Change the direction here a little bit. And it's almost flawless there. I like that. Primer will fix anything else that's there. That looks really good. So I'm really happy. Um, great that we made this uh, mobile English wheel. We're going to make the bigger one. We're going to put it on uh, video. We'll, we'll actually enhance this design a little bit and make it a little better. And uh, everybody's been clamoring for plans for it, so hopefully we can get some plans together. People are still waiting for the, the gathering tool plans, but I promise. I'm trying to hire somebody who can do the CAD work for me. My workload is uh, pretty heavy. Uh, you know, I worked last night, to over. it was like 12.15 before I went home. That's a.m., that's 12.15 a.m. So, um, we're going to finish up the Healy. Uh, we're taking some of the dents out on it in a video later on today, which will be published Friday. So we're going to finish that uh, segment where we can planish the Healy. We've got it over here. We've got to get the Healy shroud, uh, the weld ground, so we can get in here and planish this all out. And we'll probably get the welds done around here. Like I said, I might make a new piece here and weld that in after, but for now it might weld these up. We'll weld this up and maybe we'll do a little bit of dent repair here, but we're going to show, uh, we might use the uh, air planishing, mobile air planishing hammer on this area here where it's really crunched up pretty good. Uh, but if the, uh, the English wheel, the mobile English wheel works good, we're going to use that also. Uh, so. That's upcoming. That'll be published on Friday. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. And remember that metal is clay. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please give us the likes. Hit that uh, notification button and give us the comments. Thank you. It's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Workshop.